In a world that seems so troubled, how do we hold on to hope? And how do we cultivate hope in children if we struggle to find it for ourselves? Today's audiobook features a deeply personal conversation with one of the most beloved figures in the world. Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Jana, also known as Jana. In today's episode, I'm reviewing The Book of Hope, a survival guide for trying times, written and read by Jane Goodall and Douglas Abrams. Over 20 years ago, Jane Goodall published Reason for Hope, a memoir that explored her deepest convictions formed through her experiences as a naturalist and researcher of chimpanzee behavior. Since then, Goodall has grown even more famous for her environmental advocacy and global programs. The Book of Hope audiobook was released in October 2021 and features a 67-page PDF that includes many photos and additional context for listeners. Don't make the same mistake I did and forget to look at this material until after listening to the audiobook. There's a lot of photos and research reference material that build on and illustrate the audiobook content. The Book of Hope is intended to answer the question Jane hears most often in her vast audiences of all ages. Frequently, she's asked, what reason is there to hope? Or how do we remain hopeful despite our trying times? I want to emphasize that for good all, these questions are not only focused on environmentalism or climate change, she's also alluding to political upheaval and the COVID pandemic. Goodall and Abrams begin by defining the word hope for their audience. Since it's sometimes seen pejoratively as a lack of action or even naive denialism, for good all, hope is most simply defined as a trait necessary to human survival. Part of this is based on research that hope for the future drives behaviors in the present, since the choices we make directly impact our quality and length of life. For good all, though, hope is also fundamental to what she calls the indomitable human spirit. This certainly seems evident in her personality, and it's what makes her such a pleasure to listen to. Semantics aside... Goodall is remarkably open to how her audience acts on hope, so long as they don't lose it altogether. This is part of Goodall's charm. She's had to facilitate cooperation from some very powerful and opposing groups of people over the course of her career. Animal rights activists and pharmaceutical and oil executives, to name just a few. She's not intent on prescribing a specific remedy or course of action so much as persuading us to use whatever skills we have to contribute to a better planet for all living creatures. Goodall is devoted to repairing the, quote, disconnect between our clever brain and our compassionate heart, unquote. In doing so, she wisely resists the false dichotomy of humans versus nature that some environmentalists fall prey to. This also enables Goodall's message to reach a wider audience. She's always appealing to our better instincts or the better angels of our nature. And this is the key to her nearly universal appeal and influence. She has a knack for reminding us of our best selves and what we might achieve if we focus on using our strengths in our community, no matter how small the impact might seem at first. Goodall's inclusiveness and her capacity for wonder make her a hit with young audiences too. She doesn't lead with facts and figures, although many are provided in the reference notes. The simple, clear language used throughout make this very easy to understand. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this to teens and young adults. And although Goodall's life experiences provide a framework for the conversation, she always returns to how listeners can take ideas and insights and apply these to wherever they happen to be. Co-author Douglas Abrams serves as a friendly interviewer throughout this audiobook, and he narrates his half of the conversation throughout. Considering the audio was recorded during the confines imposed by the pandemic, it's exceptional quality that I think you'll enjoy. Goodall admits she's become busier than ever since the pandemic grounded her from her frequent travels, and I couldn't help but feel inspired by the photograph of her speaking on Zoom in her bedroom of her family home in England. 
Her laptop is perched atop an impromptu desk, like so many of us have done during the pandemic. If you're interested in this topic, you can also listen to Jane Goodall's Hopecast series on major podcast platforms. I've linked to that in the show notes since it features interviews led by Goodall with global leaders and environmentalists. That said, the Book of Hope is a marvelous audiobook and a great gift in any format. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And I'll leave you with one of my favorite Jane Goodall quotes from this book. Hope does not deny all the difficulty and all the danger that exists, but it is not stopped by them. There is a lot of darkness, but our actions create light. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you have not yet done so, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on Anchor, Apple, Spotify, and many others. By subscribing, you help increase the profile of this podcast and chances of other listeners finding it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well.